He never, he never said, look at me because I'm great. He said, follow me because of what God's done in my life and because of the favor on my life. And um, so I know that that's grace. That's God's grace. That's his ability in him. So that's what we followed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same as Paul following Jesus. You know, Jesus, like you were saying, you know, he set the bar so high and, and he was such a great man. Uh, it, it says that when they found him in the temple, he was sitting in the midst of the teachers. He, mm -hmm. It says they were, he was both listening to them and asking them questions. I love it. Yeah. You learn by listening and asking questions. That, that consistency, that the consistency of being in God's presence to be ready to do what God, what he was born to do. I want to welcome you to Winning Conversations, and we're so glad that you joined us for another First Fridays. And it's so great to once again connect with Eric and Nikki, yes. and and connect with you, and um, you know, just Pastor Net and I, and all of our staff. Uh, we love all of you at Heritage of Faith, and we're so grateful for your faithfulness. We're so mm -hmm. grateful for all that you do to cause Heritage of Faith to be the church that God's called it to be. And also, yeah. if you don't go to Heritage, we thank you that you connect with us each week. And we believe that this podcast today mm -hmm. is going to take you higher in your in your life of faith. And Amen. I'm excited about today. Yeah, I mean, yeah. today, uh, this this month, you know, it's going to be about the legacy of Dr. Savell. Amen. And so we think we just jump into this. Yeah. Let's do it. Well, it wasn't my heart and what I messaged them. I didn't really give them a whole lot of... Uh, information on what we're going to talk about, uh, but it did, did give them a scripture, and the scripture is found in Philippians chapter 3, verse 17, and it says this. It says, brethren, join in following my example, and note those who so walk, as you have us for a pattern. You know, what I see in that is the fact that Paul had marked people's lives in his life and ministry, and uh, I don't know about you, you didn't have the opportunity to know Dr. Savell, but I can say that he's marked my life. Right. Yeah. You know, so, you know, what does that scripture, follow that pattern, mean to you? I mean, we're gonna, we, we want to talk about things that we learned from him, but, you know, what are some things that come to mind when we think of that following that pattern and following him? I think one of the first things I thought of when you mentioned that was, you know, Jesus always want, endeavored to do what the Father told him. And the Bible tells us he was the exact image of the Father. Mm -hmm. And then Paul went on to say, follow me as I follow Christ. And so it's a pattern that set from God the Father to Jesus, to Paul, to those of us that came behind Paul. You right. know, and, and I love that Dr. Savell, he even wrote a book on what I learned from the men who taught <laughs> right. me the most. Mm -hmm. You know, and so he set the pattern of learning from those that you, you know, that are mentoring you, that you respect and admire. Yeah. And so, of course, we're going to follow his footsteps and, you know, talk about the things yeah. he taught us. Right, so right. Good. How about you when you think of that scripture, things we were talking about earlier? Well, and I was praying about this last night, and it, it can be challenging to um, follow after someone so great. You know, when we looked up to him and as we got to know him, um, just, but there was a grace on his life, and he called it favor. <laughs> and, but you can't, you can't follow a pattern without that grace, without right. that inner strength or that ability, you know. So that's yeah. the the one thing I've learned is he never he never said, look at me because I'm great. He said, follow me because of what God's done in my life and because of the favor on my life. And um, so I know that that's grace. That's God's grace. That's his ability in him. Yeah, so. yeah I think w what you were sharing before when you were talking about that word pattern and you said it was like, uh, like a stamp. Mm -hmm. It was like a, an impression, you right. know, but understanding that in the old days when they looked at that, it was something that was etched in there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think that's what happens when we follow a, a man of God. It's not about putting them on a pedestal, but right. it's about honoring the fact, the things that he etched into our lives, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's, whether it's different you know, that's the favor of God or, yeah. oh, looks like a job for El Shaddai <laughs> yeah. or, you know, the God of the breakthrough will visit your house. Th those things are like etched into my heart and they're not just yeah. cute, funny statements, but it's the word of God. Right. And in the things that he's et etched into our hearts, the things he's stamped upon us. And 
man, what an honor it has been to yeah. to be a part of this ministry and and serve him and serve such a, an amazing man of God that had a heart. And uh, I mean, I mean, what are some things that you know you learned from him, Eric? Things that you know, he set the bar really high. <laughs> yeah. And but that, isn't that what you want? Somebody yeah. that you're following. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't want to follow somebody that sets the bar low, right? Yeah. Or yeah. mediocre. Right? Yeah, or mediocre. And so one of the biggest things yeah. I learned from him is the scripture: "Walk with a wise man, and you'll be wise." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I looked up the definition of wise man, and it's one that exceeds. That's good. So wow. it's one that sets the bar high. Right. That's so good. if you're walking with uh, people that set the bar high, yeah. then then you'll set the bar high. That's so good. And so one of the, uh, it says uh, exceed means to go beyond a limit that's set. Mm. And if you remember, he would talk mm. about how he was born in Mississippi. Mm. I was born in Mississippi. Mississippi. Yeah, Mississippi. 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 <laughs> yeah. And uh, so we learned how to spell it. You know. Anyway, but he would talk about how you know like they were pretty came up pretty poor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And his grandpa would hire. Uh, hide cash mm-hmm. in the property. Yeah. And so when he bought the property years later, uh, he went out, looked for the cash, you know, <laughs> right, found, right. found cash everywhere. <laughs> but that's how they, you know, they lived. And so he said when when dad got him out and moved to Louisiana, that they got out of that environment. Mm-hmm. And so there were new limits that were set, yeah. you know, and he exceeded those. Amen. And so when you look at his life coming up in humble beginnings, you might would say, and then at the end where he's traveling around the world in an international jet. Right. And if you talk to people all over the world, he meant so much to so many people. Yeah. Yeah. Like so many people were impacted. And they want to just share with you how they were impacted yeah. by yeah. his ministry. How could a person do that? Yeah. It's a person that exceeds uh, a set limits, exceeds limitations, yeah. surpasses mm. the mindset of the environment you know, yeah. yeah, that that they grew up in. Right, right, right. wow. Man. Yeah, but to follow, and to follow a pattern, you have to do what he did. Right. You know, when you look at a pattern and you want to duplicate the same thing, then you've got to do what they did to get what they got. And he would say that as well. It, it's simple as like, sometimes you have to let go of some companions. Yeah. Because the verse goes on to say, walk with wise men, you'll be wise. But if you walk with a fool. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah. So there may be times where you have to let go of some companions. When you say let go, it means I'm not, I'm just not going to give them as much time. Right. As I would if I'm, if I'm following after somebody that has exceeded the limitations that I want to, I want to break some barriers in my life. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's like Jesus uh, growing up, it says that he grew strong in spirit. Right. Well, then when his family took him to the feast, and then they were set to go back home. Right. And they're like, where's Jesus? <laughs> you know, and they're looking all around. They're asking people, where's yeah. Jesus? And so they go back to the town to look for him. Right. And he's where? He's sitting there in the temple learning. Yeah. yeah. So he's a young boy, but he's learning from people that are older than him, right? you know, and he's submitting himself to, to those that have more knowledge than him. And so, uh, and so that when they came in and found him that he's like, you know, I'm about my father's business. Right. But if you, if you follow that pattern, it's, it's someone that is, uh, they don't know it all. They're learning, they're gathering information from people that know more than Amen. them so that they can exceed a barrier, exceed a limitation. Right. So good. You know, and that's what I just see in his life when you talk about following that pattern. I'd I'd watch uh, Annette. She likes to sew, and there's times that when she, we were doing that uh, a play that, that our granddaughter had for school, you know, she ha- here she has this pattern, and she puts the fabric on it, and it shows exactly where to cut, and 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 to how to make this this beautiful costume, <laughs> right. and and so with we think about it, it's not. It's never about elevating a man, but it's understanding the fact, following the pattern. What Paul was saying mm-hmm. is, and, and you just say getting his results, doing what he did to get his results. Well, it wasn't just him doing his own results, it, doing his own thing. It was about him doing the word. Right. Yeah. You know, the Bible says, follow those. Mm. You know, it says through faith and patience that inherited the promises. Right. Well, the reason any of us is following Dr. Sabella is because of the results of his life. That's it. He was getting the kingdom kind of life That's that, it. that we're all supposed to be seeking after. Right. You know, and so he became not just not not just because of of any one thing, but the man of God that he was. Right. right. 
produce those results in his life. So that's what we followed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same as Paul following Jesus. You know, Jesus, like you were saying, you know, he set the bar so high and, right. and he was such a great man, you know, because the grace that was on his life. But Jesus even set the example of that right. because he said, I only do what the Father says to do. And I think that was Dr. Savell's heart too, is that he continually stayed with what God told him to do. And whenever he got off of what God told him to do, you know, yeah. God always brought, he always brought, brought him back and he obeyed yeah. and you know he had to give up some things that were good things right yeah. but he wanted to do the god things that god had given him to do in his life Amen. so we you know that's even something we learn but always doing those things that god tells us to do it's okay if i share a scripture there there was one going back to no, jesus right. being no, in the temple you can't, you can't share may, a I, may i share a scripture with you uh it, it says that when they found him in the temple he was sitting in the midst of the teachers He's, mm. it says they were he was both listening to them and asking them questions. I love, love that. it. And so when you come across somebody that all they want to you want to do is talk, well, how are they learning? Yeah. We learn by listening and asking questions. I always think when I'm in the room, I already know what I know. Right. Right. I want to know what other people know so that I can when I say I know what I know, it'll be more. You know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that's what if you look at Dr. Savell, he would always say my life changed when Kenneth Copeland came to Shreveport, Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah. And so because when he, he, the gospel was presented in a way that he had never heard it before. Yeah. And it, and yeah. it altered his life. Yeah. And so when you look at the end of his life, it could be what they said about Jesus, where they said, the Pharisees said, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Mm -hmm. Well, it's because he was listening. Mm -hmm. He was asking questions. Yeah. He was fellowshipping with the Father. Right. Yeah. And so... He was always, you know, yeah. Yeah. trying to, you know, go for things that he, you know, where people knew more than him. Yeah. 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 Which yeah. Dr. Savell said, I mean, he, his favorite thing, he would say, my favorite thing to do is study the word. That's yeah. it. You know, and that's what produced his life. That's it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think any one of us can say multiple things. Like you just went through a list of things we've learned from him, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I think as far, you know, there, there's, I, I took notes of things that, but one of the things that he impressed him early was the integrity of the word, which is mm. what we're talking about. Right. Yeah. You know, he he learned and he tried to impress on everyone that this God that we love and serve and know is a covenant keeping God. Yeah. That's it. He's not a man that he can lie. Yeah. If he says it, he'll do it. Yeah. You know, right. and the bottom line is that we just have to choose to believe it right. yeah. and to stand on it. Yeah. Amen. I mean, yeah. Jerry. To stand Savell, right? <laughs> That's it. Uh, having done all the stand, stand, stand. Savell. And so it's, it was it was the integrity <laughs> of the word to him. And yeah. he learned that at a young age. Yeah. You know, I loved seeing it over, you know, when we had the memorial service and they showed the video mm -hmm. of him. And when he's l young, he almost looks like Bryn in the video, his yeah. grandson, you know? <laughs> right. And uh, just sitting there and teaching, not yeah. only learning from Kenneth Copeland, but teaching yeah. in that group. And, right. you know, just that message of a covenant keeping God, that you can believe this God we serve. Yeah. Every yeah. word he says and, and is written, you can believe it. Go yeah. to the bank on it. I loved how he tells us stories about how he stayed hungry. I mean, he went to go visit Oral Roberts, and he l listened to those messages yes. over and over, and the times that he would spend with Kenneth Copeland asking him questions and listening to messages over and over and over and over to get – to get the word inside of him yes. to, you know, yeah, so watching the videos of uh, T.L. Osborne, yeah. you know, yeah. going to his museum right. and talking to him and hearing, hear, hearing about all those things. He was a hungry, hungry person for the from things of God. Yeah. And you contrast that yeah. with, say, a Christian that says already, already, know, I already that. know that <laughs> I've heard already it heard, once, already heard that or even or twice or even critics of little shorts that we put out. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like you can spend your time learning, learning something new, you know, to, to develop yourself so that you end up, you know, surpassing, excelling yes. from your own environment. I mean, right. you think about that, how much from a little boy in Mississippi, yeah. Mississippi, Mississippi, to where he was at the end of his mm -hmm. life, people see where he was at the end of his life, say, I want that. Yeah. But the journey there was the increase by association. Yeah. You know, law of increase by association. So good. Amen. And, you know, as we're sitting here, I was thinking about things that marked me, you know, when I came here in 1999. And I remember right before Christmas break. And like, see, a lot of people would know him as uh, teaches on favor or mm -hmm. teaches on, um, uh, you know, the 
covenant keeping God and, and all those things are what he's known for. Mm-hmm. But when we went to Bible school, there was some things that he would teach. Like I remember right before Christmas break, he taught several days, four hours a day on holiness. Mm-hmm. And it was really all about revival. And he sat there and taught us about a life of holiness. And he talked wow. about the key to every major move of God that's ever happened in the earth was always, always came down to holiness, came to, to repentance. Repentance came to a hunger for God. And, mm-hmm. and I, I can even, if you know, just see him. I remember that last session in front of 250 students. He got, he, he laid prostrate on the ground and was wow. just seeking the Lord. Wow. Wow. And you talk about something that, that, you know, people didn't see that that side of hunger mm-hmm. of him because you you know a believers convention is a different setting and yeah. or so so he he's he's going to of course teach what God gives and tells him to teach but what I saw him doing in that moment was was something that I knew he did in his personal life right mm-hmm. right and it was I'm going to live live my life and it's going to honor God and and that showed me he wouldn't just have a hunger for God but he had a hunger for for to be a part of the next move of God. And, mm-hmm. and I remember him always saying that one of the things that his greatest fears would be to know that he's been going one direction and God's been going the other direction. Yeah. And he was like, if God, you're doing something in the earth, I want to be a part of it. Exactly. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Or even the catalyst for it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. I love it. And just that, that, that hunger, that, that, w- that was something that marked me. Yeah. yeah. And when you say mark, it means made an impression on. Yeah. It's the right. same that thing. Pattern, that. And that's what that, pa- that word pattern means. It's, it's something that has been impressed or pressed on you. You know, like if you ever play with Play-Doh and you, you have a, a mold, you know, you have to press down on it to get that imprint or that pattern. And, um, and it doesn't come just from listening to him once or hearing about him. It's continuing to hear the messages that that um, he brought forth yeah. from just, spending time with just God. Just like he know? did with Brother Hagen. He said yeah. he had 2,000 messages on his little mm-hmm. yeah. iPod and every... Tom, he's on a plane or anywhere. Yeah. He's right. pulling out the iPod and listening. Yeah. And he loved it when people said, oh, you're just another, you know, right. yeah. Kenneth Copeland. Copenhagen. Co- yeah. yeah, and he's like, that's good. I like that. <laughs> Thanks like, for the compliment. You can tell, <laughs> tell the stories as good as he can. Yes. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. Pattern. Oh, man, just thinking of, just, I'm, I have these different things, messages. I, just the Bible school, passion for God and a passion mm-hmm. for souls. Yeah. You know, if you have a passion for God, then you have a passion for what he has a passion for, and that's people. Yeah. You know. um, uh, Even the second class, that new creation realities. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was real to him because he went from this quitter loser, and God promised to make him a champion in life, and then he would turn around and make winners in life. Right. You know, and it all started with there, that his his revelation of being a new creation, the revelation of righteousness. Amen. That new creation. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, he probably had uh, opportunities to, you know, walk with the wise man, you'd be wise, walk with fools. And there would be Pharise- Pharisees that would criticize to say, which they did Jesus. Mm-hmm. Aren't, isn't this yeah. the carpenter's son? Yeah. yeah. You know, because you yeah. take someone that has excelled and surpassed right. and transcended yeah. uh, limitations and boundaries. That's it. And then, but people want to pull you back into that because then they're, they're faced with the idea that they have that same choice, Yeah, you know? And so I just believe that it's an encouragement to all of us that if you can come from a family like that in Mississippi Mississippi, (laughs) and and be where he was, you know, obviously it's the grace and calling on on his life, but everyone has some kind of grace that God's put on them for what God's called them to do, right. to excel, yeah. to surpass, to transcend in where God's put them. Yeah. Right. We don't have an excuse. Yeah. You know, we can do that. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, because you had the opportunity to, to travel with him. Um, I got to travel with him back in the early 2000s. And, and so to watch him on the road, of course, we, we see it. We, we would see him here in the church, but when you watch him in the road, there's, there's different anointings mm-hmm. that he would operate in and flow in, depending on what environment he was in, and just watching him navigate different audiences. And 
And I remember um, we flew into Liberty, Texas, and um, and just watching because he like everyone else would sometimes want to go to a city and go, hey, go play or see the sights and all that. You know, three o'clock. You know, just his consistency. Three o'clock, he's going to be in the in the room. He's going right? to take his hour nap, and then he's going <laughs> to he's going to get up and he's going to seek the Lord and pray in the spirit mm-hmm. before that meeting. And he and, said he said I would he said I would walk the floor mm-hmm. and pray in the spirit until my mind became fruitful. Yes, so yeah. that you he could now hear in the spirit from what God wants for that service. Yeah. Even though he yeah. could drop, you know, preach at the drop of a hat or drop his own hat to preach. <laughs> right. <laughs> Over 15,000 sermons, he could have preached anything, could have, you know, not yeah. even been prepared to walk up and preach anything, but he wanted God's plan for that service. Yeah, he wanted That's to amazing. hear on behalf of the people. And and I remember one day, one, one time traveling with him, we flew into Liberty, Texas, and um, we went to this small hotel um was it was a no-name hotel i think it only had maybe 15 rooms it was just a single floor you know where this it's not a hallway it's just you have an outside entrance into your room you know <laughs> a and a motel i motel, guess is what yeah. they call it <laughs> not a hotel <laughs> <laughs> holiday inn but uh, and uh so i remember um being there and we all went out for catfish because every they, they the the pastor said hey call i need it i need i need to take you to this place we have the they have the best catfish and so, um, so we went, had catfish, you know, had a great lunch. And but Darcevel said, "No, I'm, I'm going to stay back and prepare." And I remember going back. We 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 had lunch. We went back, and we just, um, uh, you know, we we rested for a bit, and then we got dressed and went to the service. But there was something different about that night when you walked into that church. Wow. And while we were having catfish is when he had his, I guess, third visitation. Wow. Was that the God of the Breakthrough one? That the God of the Breakthrough will visit oh, your house. Oh, my goodness. So while we're eating Liberty catfish. Oh, that's amazing. So while, while we're eating catfish, he, he has an encounter with Jesus. Wow. And, and, um, and he comes in, and wow. That's, That'll press your life. That, Ooh, that, that, leave that, impression. that yes. was a stamp. And from where, where that church service started to when that, I mean, people were, all i mean all over the place in that service and running i mean it was that that it was electrifying god was big in that place but it, it goes back to what marked me was he could have gone and had some good catfish right. <laughs> and missed but, out and and missed out on what god wanted to do but he knew that it was that that consistency that mm. the consistency of being in god's presence to be ready to do what God, what he was born to do. I think that was 2002. I, I think it was somewhere around there. It, it, it was. Yeah. Because uh, mm-hmm. Nikki and I had moved to Michigan in 2000. Well, he came to a church in Detroit, mm-hmm. and he preached that message. So it wasn't long after mm-hmm. he got that visitation that he was in Michigan and preached that. I remember that message. There were mm-hmm. three points to it, yeah. talking about the widow woman. Yeah. Well, the Lord spoke to me. Uh, we were sitting probably, it was a pews, and I'd say we were... 15 back bros back or something ish and the lord spoke to me of what to give and it was like one of those oh oh <laughs> you know <laughs> and i turned to nikki and i said uh the lord just spoke to me of what to give she's like what do you what is it and i was like i don't want to tell you <laughs> yeah and at the time it was a huge a huge wow. seed wow. and we sowed that that seed that night i had to post date the check <laughs> Now it wasn't a faith check because uh, I was I had a check in there that was waiting to be cleared, so it wasn't a faith check, as in the you know yeah, yeah we've gotten some of those. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I did. I had to post date. I said, please don't you know. Well, they cashed it and the money wasn't hadn't been cleared yet from this check. I wait anyway. Nikki funny. hates when I get into stories like this, but <laughs> no, <it's funny. laughs> I'm just like get to the point. Get to the point. <laughs> My point was is that I got a call from the office. You know, oh, we're so sorry and all this. But who knew 20 years later wow. that, you know, we'd be sitting here in the, in the ministry and yeah. it came out of that message. I just, that's, yeah. that's so and cool. Amazing. That's so cool that you were there. And so the thing uh, is, yeah, is that is so cool that you were there. We were there. That is so I was cool. in Detroit. Oh my God. And so you probably, you probably, you probably <laughs> saw amazing. me. You were? I was at, I was at Detroit. And, <laughs> were you at the book table? Uh, I was at the book, I, I did oh. the book table, so. Because he was signing oh books gosh. and I went up to him and I yeah. said, hey, you know, hey, fellow Louisianian, 
you know, trying to create yeah. some common ground. Yeah, it was. A, he was just I so believe, if I remember, it was an up close and personal meeting. Yes, wow. it was. A, it was a partner oh, meeting. Gosh. Yes, and it was. I don't remember the pastor's Both the name. Both daughters were but there he, too. But, but he was yeah. Italian. Wow. Uh, the pastor, uh, I think, it had Italian background. Drawing a blank on his name, but yeah, I was. I was there. I ran wow. the book tables. I love it. And, Dink, uh, we could have seen you. That yeah. is I know. Awesome. <laughs> probably like fifteen <laughs> but, years before we met you. Yeah. Wow. It's, awesome. Like, so, so if you think about it, e- even that yeah. when traveling and you know, preaching that message because that was the assignment he had at that moment. Yeah. If I w- he preached that message maybe seven days in that week, not one time did it come out the same. And you could tell that all of a sudden he would get to this certain point that he would normally go continue with the mm-hmm. points he mm-hmm. received for that message. And he would never get beyond point one, which was about knowing God. Mm-hmm. Is about knowing wow. God, knowing God so personally, knowing Him there. as the God of the it breakthrough, and He would get to that point, and He may He may preach on that point, just knowing God for an hour, and never hit the other two points because He knew the congregation wasn't ready for that, or they yeah. weren't mature enough to handle the next, and so just be able to navigate what needed to be ministered, and then all of a sudden, I'm I'm, I'm thinking He's going to go, you know, this no, all of a sudden He adds something new to it, and it was something new oh. or. Or after I was like, that was a great point. He goes, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that point until it came out while I was preaching, you know. And so watching that and just watching him around people. He's so, Mm -hmm. so kind. So kind. Yeah. Like we get in the elevator and uh, he let everybody out of the elevator (laughs) before he, before he would get out every time. And, you know, I was, as a young boy, praise the Lord, I was raised to be a gentleman Mm -hmm. and I, I, he reminded me wow. what a gentleman is like. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And you know, at the memorial, we got lots of you know in the office, a lot of people responding, you know, just emailing in. And one of the common threads, even in texts that we would receive, was he was such a gentleman. Wow. You know what a gentleman he was over and over and over again. Really. Because you know sometimes you have you know ministers that aren't kind, mm-hmm. right. and he was not one of those. Yeah. He was always. A gentleman. You know, because that prophetic anointing gets on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was a man of love. I mean, mm-hmm. he really was. And I know a lot of people said he, you know, I know what you said. We don't put a man on the platform and we don't. But he, to a lot of people, was the closest they ever saw of Jesus in the flesh. No wow. doubt. And they said that to us over and over and no over doubt. again yeah. in emails and in person at the memorial. And, For sure. And he really was. He was endeavoring to be that pattern, that exact copy wow. that, that now we can copy. That's it. And I think that's something that... As ministers, we can we need to continue to be that example for others, mm-hmm. knowing that no matter where he was, if he was with his his children, his grandchildren, mm-hmm. whether he was at a huge conference, whether he was at a a small restaurant, Paris Cafe, and he he was the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He wasn't, mm-hmm. you know, he, he he was just the same. It, it didn't matter. He didn't do thing to please people. Right. Mm. He he just loved everyone for who they were, where they were, yeah. and because they knew that that if God could do it for if God could do it for Jerry Savelle, then God that's could it. do it for anyone. Yeah, that's it. And uh, I don't know about you, but uh, I wanna I wanna we talk about carrying on legacy. Yeah. I, I wanna carry on not just the message, but I think it's carrying on just his his characteristics that mm-hmm. he developed. Through the fear, fruit of the spirit and his relationship with Jesus, yeah. Amen. That's good. and he would want you right. to excel, surpass, yeah. Yeah. transcend yeah. everything that he even did, right. and that might that might uh, blow some people's minds. Yeah. You know, if I can use that terminology, but that's what he would want for all of us is yeah. to is to go higher, to to do greater things. That's what the word of the Lord this year for us was to mm-hmm. uh, to experience promotion yeah. to. Yeah to uh, advance, advance progress, progress and, and do all those things. So your highest expectations be fulfilled. Yeah, amen. And that's where he wants you to be. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. yeah. And, and he, I know he wants, just like he wants our church, he wants the ministry, he wants your life to go way beyond. He wants us to go farther than he did because that was his heart. That is. That's what his, that's what his heart was. And, and so, so Father, we just pray over those watching today and listening, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for the men or women of God. Dr. Savell has implanted and stamped their hearts with things, yeah, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that today thank would you, just Lord. bring a fresh new vision 
for the rest of their lives. Lord, we speak life over them. We speak strength over them. We declare that their greatest days are ahead of them and not behind them. I thank you, Father, that this that the God of the breakthrough is visiting their house Amen. in every way. And I thank you, Lord, that they will not know lack any longer. But you will, as they walk with wise men, I thank you that they will see them, their lives increase and go from faith to faith yes. and glory to glory. Amen. And we thank you for it in Jesus' yeah. name. Amen. 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 And once again, thank you for joining us today. And uh, go give them Jesus.